wait a minute, this isn't the bar. <laughs> With its sixth installment just around the corner, you, dear internet, need to make sure you're fully caught up on what's been happening to that boozing narcissist with the long face. We're taking you back to season one, bringing you up to speed on all the major plot points of the series. I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm giving you a crash course to prep for the final season of BoJack Horseman. Before we start horsing around, <laughs> thank you. We just want to take the time to shout out to all of our sponsors on Patreon who've been helping us out. Click the link to learn how you can ship in and what swag you'll get in return. Speaking of swag, we have a great deal with TeePublic. TeePublic is where you can get shirts to rep all your fandoms. You help Nerdwire simply by wearing a shirt. And we help you get service in restaurants by encouraging you to wear one. You know, I am not crazy about the bread here. Mm. Why do I keep eating it? Bojack, can you please just listen for a second? Season one. In the pilot episode, Bojack Horseman, The Bojack Horseman Story, Chapter 1, we meet Bojack, a 50-year-old washed-up sitcom actor and horse who's attempting to write a memoir to profit off of his withering 15 minutes of fame. He's failed to deliver on this tell-all, and his publisher has hired him a ghostwriter, Diane Wynn. Diane also happens to be the girlfriend of Mr. Peanut Butter, another actor who Bojack can't stand due to his unending enthusiasm. Diane will have her work cut out for her. Bojack despises her boyfriend, is clearly addicted to drugs and alcohol, is attracted to her, and, in his most recent public incident, was a dick to a literal Navy SEAL. Bojack has an agent, Princess Carolyn, who he's had a less than professional relationship with over the years. And we'll see the two of them hook up, break up, and start and stop working together throughout the series. In season one, she celebrates her 40th birthday and realizes that she's made a lot of sacrifices and missed out on a lot of milestones in her pursuit of Bojack, who she realizes is not someone she can settle down with. We also have Todd Chavez, Bojack's roommate, who lives with him rent-free and is a notorious slacker. Todd does turn out to have a brilliant rock opera rolling around up in his noodle, but when that seems to start taking off in a positive direction, Bojack sabotages him, fearing he'll lose his companion. Oh, also, the sabotage involves character actress Margot Martindale. She appears a lot. It's amazing. When Diane has to go home to Boston for her father's funeral, Bojack comes along and meets Diane's family. While he's away, Princess Carolyn and Todd decide to capitalize on people thinking Bojack's house is actually the home of David Boreanis? I could have sworn Bojack Horseman lived here. Actor known for Buffy, Angel, Bones, and hanging in my locker in fifth grade next to a picture of Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy made me feel safe. David did not. And I liked it. This scam ultimately lands to Todd going to prison, where he's pursued by not one, but two gangs. <sighs> Some people get all the luck. When he comes back from Boston, Bojack drunkenly decides to steal the D from the Hollywood sign. Why? Because he thinks it'll impress Diane. Bitches love when you steal shit with their initials. He and Mr. Peanut Butter attempt to return the D, but it gets destroyed. Hollywood from here on out will be known as Hollywood, because there's not enough D in Hollywood to go around. Now we know that Bojack is known for the sitcom Horsin' Around. Creator of that show, Herb Kazaz, is mentioned throughout the first season. All we know is that Herb and Bojack did not leave on good terms. When it's revealed that Herb is dying from terminal rectal cancer, Bojack seeks closure and wants to bury the hatchet. He has Diana accompany him on this trip. Todd's also in the car, but he's not part of this. He's gonna get carjacked by some masked chicks in bikinis. He'll be fine. Herb and Bojack met in LA stand-up scene, long before Bojack developed his habits. Herb had a girlfriend named Charlotte at the time, and he was successful at these shows and made a great impression with some network reps, landing him a series deal. He writes a show specifically for Bojack and takes him along for the ride. Does he do this because he loves Bojack? Yes. Romantically? Perhaps. The fame definitely goes to Bojack's head in his relationship with Herb Fraze. When the scandalous news of Herb being gay breaks, Bojack doesn't stand up for Herb and stays silent as the network suits give him the boot. So, when he comes to a dying Herb, Bojack tries to apologize. Herb refuses to accept this apology and kicks him out, saying he'll never forgive him. But what I needed then was a friend. And you abandoned me. And I will never forgive you for that. Distraught and seeking comfort, Bojack kisses Diane, which puts Diane in a really weird place and she works for him and is marrying Mr. Peanut Butter. Bojack makes it his mission to sabotage their wedding, but alas, she and PB wed. She finishes his memoir and sends the prototype to Penguin Publishing. Bojack hates what Diane has written about him and forbids her to publish it. Diane retaliates by sharing a teaser of the book online as a preview, which leads Bojack to firing her. Bojack's former co-star, occasional bedfellow, which is so gross, and drug enthusiast, Sarah Lynn, comes to his house and does all the drugs with him and Todd as they attempt to write a whole new book. This bender causes Bojack to hallucinate about Herb's girlfriend, Charlotte, and imagine a world where they have a daughter and live out their lives together. What are you thinking about? Oh, just how nice things could have been if you had chosen this life. 
Bojack ends up finding Diane at a ghostwriter convention, apologizes, and tells her to publish the book. Three months after the book is released, Bojack is pinned for the role of his dreams, Secretariat. The book seems to have resurrected his career, but everyone in his life might be done with him. Oh, and during this time, Todd starts working for PB, and the two try to come up with various businesses. Full disclosure, Bojack really sucks as a person or horseman or whatever, particularly at the beginning of this series. It took me a while to get on board. Now, I'm obsessed. And I wasn't alone in this feeling. Rotten Tomatoes gave Bojack Horseman a 67% for the first season, and season two 100%. So, let's talk about when the show really picks up steam. All this time, I assumed there was more to me than everyone thought. But maybe there isn't. That's the part where you're supposed to disagree with me. Season two. Bojack lands Secretariat and, upon listening to a motivational tape, thinks that having a positive outlook will improve his life. This attitude adjustment, however, hurts his performance on set. What are you doing here? Did we get it? I can tell by your face that we didn't get it. All right, let me try again. Bojack tries to bond with the film's human director, Kelsey Jannings. Season two also introduces us to a new lady in Bojack's life. Wanda. She's a network exec who's been in a coma for 30 years and has no idea about his current successes. So she seems like the perfect woman for Bojack to date as he handles semi-fame again. Herb Kazaz dies this season, with Bojack never receiving that closure he so desperately wanted. Princess Carolyn has a new man enter her life. Or men. It's three kids in a trench coat. But she insists that he's Vincent Adult Man. I don't know who decided to create this character, but they are a treasure. I guess some people just see what they want to see. Right, Vincent? Um, yeah! Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter began having issues, including, but not limited to, debating whether or not Tony Curtis is dead. Diane admits to being unhappy and needing more exciting work to feel worthwhile. She decides to go to the war-torn Cordovia to write about what's happening there. Both of them have problems on their own, too. PB's agent dies from autoerotic asphyxiation, his business ideas cause him to go bankrupt, and he's forced to work at a lady footlocker. Eventually, he's able to begin production on a new game show. Meanwhile, Diane gets in trouble for calling attention to the sexual misconduct allegations of Hank Hippopopopolis. Hippopopopolis? Hippopopopolis. Something. Yeah, that works. Next slide. Yeah, okay. It's Bill Cosby. Hi, folks! Oh, howdy. Hank Hippopopolis. At PB's game show, Bojack competes against Harry Potter himself. It does not go well. Bringing your score down by 80 points and $12. Why are we playing for both points and dollars? Oh, tough break, BJ Novak. Secretariat director Kelsey pushes for a controversial scene to be added to the film, a sit down with Nixon agreeing not to send Secretariat to Vietnam to fight in the war. This leads to Kelsey being fired and a new director being brought in who does tons of reshoots. The final director on the film will ultimately replace a ton of Bojack's footage with a CGI Bojack. Meanwhile, Diane quits her job, comes back from Cordovia, and crashes with Bojack, all while telling PB she's still out of the country. This puts a strain on Bojack's relationship with Wanda. Ultimately, the two break up because Wanda doesn't want to be around Bojack's constant negativity. You know, it's funny. When you look at someone through rose-colored glasses, all the red flags just look like flags. Bojack decides to take a break from Hollywood and visit Charlotte in New Mexico for a few months. Turns out, Charlotte has a family. Bojack ends up staying with Charlotte and her family for two months. Bojack suggests the terrible idea of going to prom with Charlotte's daughter, Penny. After getting the kids bourbon so they can drink like adults, and probably loading one kid up with so much booze they have alcohol poisoning, Penny and Bojack take off, and a sober, 17-year-old Penny makes a pass at Bojack. Bojack tries to convince Charlotte to leave with him and start a new life with him. When she turns him down, Bojack lets Penny into his room. Charlotte catches them before anything happens, but the damage is done and Bojack goes home. Diane is still there. Todd moves out, but accidentally joins an improv troupe cult. AKA, Todd just starts doing improv. There's literally nothing happening to you. You don't understand. If you die in improv, you die in real life. Ah, so stupid. Season three. In season three, Bojack starts making the media rounds to promote Secretariat in New York. While doing so, he confesses to a journalist that he almost sleeps with that he's been digitally replaced in post-production. He then goes to the Pacific Ocean Film Festival, and we get a gorgeous, almost entirely silent episode in which Bojack reunites a baby seahorse with its father. It's incredible. If you think you don't like this show, watch this episode. Meanwhile, Princess Carolyn struggles to run her own agency. This season shows how hard she's worked for Bojack and really brings it home with a flashback episode of PC trying to get BJ on a show post horse and around. That episode also includes seeing Mr. Peanut Butter when he was married to his previous wife, Jessica Beale, and how he met Diane. 
PC goes on multiple dates on her nights off in hopes of meeting someone and makes a connection with a mouse named Ralph Stilton. Bojack later fires PC. I'm nobody, a has-been, a joke, too portly for TV. Too portly for TV? Who said that? It doesn't matter. It does matter. Secretariat is released in theaters and becomes a smash hit. During this reign of success, Todd's friend Emily sleeps with Bojack. She tries to hide this from Todd, but Bojack eventually confesses to sleeping with her. At a drug-riddled party, Diane learns that she's pregnant. She and Mr. Peanut Butter decide to terminate the pregnancy, which leads Diane to accidentally sending out a tweet about the abortion on her client Sextina Aquafina's account. This ultimately will boost Sextina's popularity, even though she herself gets pregnant and she decides to keep the baby. Mr. Peanut Butter is given the honor of announcing Oscar nominees for Best Actor, but loses the envelope containing the names of the nominees. He announces Bojack for Secretariat, who was not actually nominated. Bojack and Sarah Lynn go on a drug bender as Bojack tries to make amends with those he's hurt. Sarah Lynn misses the Oscars, where she was actually nominated and won in her category. She passes away from an overdose while she and Bojack are visiting a planetarium. This one spectacular moment we are sharing together. Right, Sarah Lynn? Sarah Lynn? Remember all those bad business ideas of Mr. Peanut Butter's? Well, turns out, buying an ass load of colanders was a great move. He saves Pacific Ocean City from a pasta catastrophe and is contacted by his first wife, Katrina, to run for governor of California. Todd and Emily make up, and Todd admits that he's not sexually attracted to women or men. Ethan, another one of Bojack's child co-stars from Horsin' Around, comes to him in hopes of launching the Horsin' Around spinoff, Ethan Around. Stupid name. Bojack panics when Ethan says he wants to be like him, and he runs off set before he films the show. He drives out into the desert and watches wild stallions run. Princess Carolyn receives a call trying to contact Bojack. We see that on the other side of the line is a teenage horse who looks a lot like Bojack. <gasps> Does he have a kid? It sounds like it's a teenage girl. Tell her I don't work for Bojack. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we can't help you. Season four. When we last left Bojack, he was watching wild horses run through the desert. This sparks him to return to his mother's childhood home in Michigan. There, he befriends a widower dragonfly who helps him restore the house. Throughout the restoration, we see flashbacks of Beatrice's home life with her mother, Honey, who became severely depressed when her son was killed in the war. Joseph, Beatrice's father, forces Honey to undergo a lobotomy after getting drunk and making Beatrice drive her around town, which led to Beatrice crashing the car. To balance out the heavy, things take a wacky turn in Mr. Peanut Butter's gubernatorial campaign when he challenges the incumbent governor, Woodchuck Kudchuck Berkowitz, to an actual race. What kind? A skiing race. Why? Who knows? Also, Mr. Peanut Butter can't ski. I wish I knew how to ski. You don't ski? Never really got into it, no. Then why did you challenge the governor to a ski race? Of course you can. I've seen all the Air Buddy movies. You never see dogs playing winter sports. I mean, aside from sledding, of course. Diane settles into her new blogging job at Girl Crush, and Princess Carolyn and her now boyfriend Ralph consider starting a family. There's a particularly heartbreaking episode that we think is being told by one of PC's descendants, but we learn none of this is real and Princess Carolyn actually has a miscarriage. She tells Ralph to leave her. Todd has a slew of misadventures, including meeting Bojack's possible daughter, Hollyhock, dating Courtney Portney, and playing Triangle at the Hollywood Bowl. Mr. Peanut Butter's campaign starts straining his marriage to Diane, especially when he agrees to start a fracking operation on their own property to prove a political point. Naturally, this will have huge ramifications. All right, remember the teenage horse? Well, that's Hollyhock. My name is Hollyhock Mannheim Mannheim Guerrero Robinson Zilberschlag Sung Fonzarelli McQuack. She's been raised by eight dads and believes Bojack is her biological father. When a DNA test proves that they are related, Bojack sets out to help Hollyhock find her mom. He does so by finding all the ladies he's hooked up with. Bojack and Hollyhock visit Bojack's mother Beatrice at her nursing home. Beatrice's dementia has progressed so much that she doesn't recognize Bojack. He decides to have his mom move in with him. This leads to Hollyhock accidentally overdosing on pills that Beatrice puts in her coffee. She's rushed to the hospital, and Hollyhock's eight dads refuse to allow Bojack in to see her. Princess Carolyn devotes herself to work and pitches a potential show, Filbert, to be picked up. What time is it right now picks up the series so long as Bojack is involved. Princess Carolyn signs his contract without his consent. Meanwhile, Beatrice's mind becomes more jumbled. Through a series of flashbacks, we learn that Beatrice ran off with Butterscotch when he got her pregnant with Bojack. Upon moving to San Francisco, their marriage began to deteriorate and Butterscotch has an affair with a maid named Henrietta. Beatrice convinces Henrietta to give up the baby she has with Butterscotch for adoption and oh my God, that baby was Hollyhock. Bojack finds out about this, tells Hollyhock's dads, and Hollyhock calls him her brother. I told you from the beginning I have eight dads. Yeah, yeah, good. But I've never had a brother. Which is so 
moving, and this feels like a turning point for our guy. Elsewhere, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter have to address that their marriage simply isn't working. This is not how I thought this would go at all. <sighs> Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter, back to normal, right? Season five, home stretch, baby. It seems like our horseman has found his stride. He's working on a new show, he's seeing his co-star, and he has a fairly healthy relationship with a family member in Hollyhock. This show, though, Philbert, is weird. And the character has eerie similarities to Bojack. Todd dates a fellow asexual, Yolanda, and though they break up, he does help her come out to her very sex-positive family. Princess Carolyn and Ralph get back together, decide to adopt, then have that baby taken away, possibly? I can do this. Nothing has changed. I changed. I have plans now, and you're not in them. If she doesn't catch a break, I will lose it. I will flip every table. I will become a cat person. What are you gonna call her? Untitled Princess Carolyn Project. But not really, though, right? Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter decide to call it quits on their marriage. PB embarks on a new relationship with a pug named Pickles. Through their courtship, we're treated to some of PB's past relationships. So he's moved on, right? Wrong. He cheats on that sweet little pug with Diane. Rather than telling Pickles about the infidelity, PB doubles down and proposes to her. During all of this, Diane deals with feeling culturally disconnected from her roots and trying to move on from Mr. Peanut Butter. Bojack's mother, Beatrice, also passes this season. In the episode Free Churro, Bojack delivers a 17-minute eulogy to his mother. She said, let that be a lesson. That's the good that comes from wanting things. She was really good at dispensing life lessons that always seem to circle back to everything being my fault. I stand by this being one of the greatest bits of television I have ever seen. The season shows Bojack really struggling with pill addiction. Hollyhock is able to connect with her half-brother over this thanks to her accidental overdosing. Bojack, however, continues to spiral, and the lines of reality and fiction begin to blur as he can no longer distinguish what's happening on Filbert and what's actually happening in real life. This comes to a head when Bojack attacks his girlfriend and co-star. Gina only doesn't press charges because she doesn't want this moment to define her career. As he tries to get a handle on things, his relationship with Diane seems to blow up as well. At the premiere of Philbert, Diane blames Bojack for what happened to Sarah Lynn and for never being honest with her. It's an intense scene, and it really highlights Diane's own hypocrisy and self-loathing. I know how you're the victim of the Sarah Lynn story. I'm serious. Explain to me how Sarah Lynn's overdose was really rough for you. Shut up. You feel a lot of guilt about that? She demands that Bojack begin to hold himself accountable. Ultimately, Bojack decides to check himself into rehab, and that's where we leave off. Many speculate the first half of this final season will completely take place in the rehab facility, with Bojack either working to better himself or escape sober living. But what I want to know, guys, is what do you think is going to happen in the sixth and final season? Were there any key points I left out that you feel are must-knows for your Bojack viewing experience? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again to everyone supporting us on Patreon, Tee Public, and just for giving us those thumbs up. For more videos, click to the left or check us out on Roku or Plex. See you, Space Cowboy.